Hey everybody, hi and welcome to the video. My name is Samal Shah. In this video, I'll essentially show you how to process or ingest smaller files into transactional data lake uh, with glue, of course. So the goal of the video is we have extremely small files sitting on S3 and we want to process them incrementally uh, using glue. So how do, how do I uh, work with smaller files? So let's get started with an amazing small lab. So let me share my screen, all right. So the first thing that we are gonna do is, uh, you'll have a script called run.py. We're gonna generate some fake data and essentially populate some extremely small files. So I'll run the Python file, which is run.py. So as you can see, we are inserting data into S3. And if I refresh here, we have a folder and observe this is 255 bytes, which means every single file has one record in it. Again, these are extremely small files. And usually when you try to ingest uh, them using glue, you pretty often run into issues with memory and other stuff, right? So I just wanna show you quickly. Uh, so if I can quickly open that, it looks like the download isn't completed yet. Uh, now it is complete. So let me quickly pull that up. And here you can see that's the JSON record, right? It's a simple um, fake data that I'm generating. Uh, and again, these are extremely small files. Now, how do I ingest them uh, into transactional data lake? And also basically we're gonna see some of the settings that you should apply while essentially running your glue jobs. So let's get started. So the first thing that I'm about to do is I'm gonna show you the glue script. So probably this one. All right, so the first thing that we are doing here is uh, pretty straightforward here. We are defining imports. So there is nothing that I need to explain you uh, on this particular part. Over here, I need to explain you some things. So basically here I'm creating a Spark session. Something that I have added is this particular line, which is Spark shuffle storage path. And we are essentially giving the storage path of S3. Now, what is this basically? Uh, just a little background. Again, I don't wanna go into too much theory. So when you basically request for workers, right? One, two, three, G1X comes with 16 GB RAM. And if I'm not mistaken, 64 GB of EBS volume. So what happens is when you're doing join or when you're doing group by, you might run out of memory because the workers have to spill the data temporarily into those storage, right? So instead of using those storage, we can leverage the cloud storage or S3 for that, right? So again, there's an article that I recently shared. So again, I'm saying that I'm gonna use this bucket inside a folder called shuffle. That's where the Spark can throw um, their, their spill data. Now, um, again, over here, these are the, uh, again, these are all my settings for my Hori data lake. So here I'm saying I wanna create a database called Hori DB, table name, small files. Again, you can give pretty much whatever you like. My unique identifier is gonna be an employee ID, and this is the part to my data lake. Now, what I really wanna show you is when I read the data, so which is exactly over here, this is what we need to do. So I am using, I'm creating a dynamic frame and I'm using a from option. I'm using S3 over here and observe carefully. This is the path to the data lake where my small files reside. Recursive as true, group files in partition and group file is equal to group size. Now you can play with these numbers for group size. So what it does is basically we group the files and then read it again, as I said, right? So. Again, this will essentially give me a glue data frame and then I'm essentially writing into the Apache Hori transactional data lake, okay? So now let's ingest these files and let me show you certain settings that I recommend um, uh, you guys, right? So I'm, I'm in the US East one. I'll be heading over to the job section. Again, I have copy pasted all the code over here. It's the same code that I explained you. Again, the only difference that we did is while reading from S3, we essentially uh, provided a parameter called group size and group files in partition. These are the parameters that we have given. Now quickly coming to the job details. Here you can see I have uh, my hoodie connector, marketplace connector, right? Uh, and that's it. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, one more thing, uh, make sure to enable bookmarks. I'm gonna click on enable. Uh, and now I will basically run this glue job. So what would happen is now um, these smaller files that I had on my S3, which is over here, these are all small files, Glue will essentially read those files, right? Will process them and it will essentially convert into a transactional data lake so I can query the data, uh, okay? So again, this might take about a minute or two. So uh, let's wait for that. 
some other um, um, advice i would like to give uh, you can save money on the glue jobs by turning on flex execution so ideally you will pay 22 cents per dpu worker versus 44 cents per dpu worker on that right another thing that i want to uh, uh, advise is introduction please enable automatically scale your work workers and you can set the maximum workers to 10 so that way uh, glue will automatically scale the number of workers based on your need right now once that is done, I also recommend to use a spill bucket so that uh, instead of using, um, you know, uh, the, the Spark using spilling the data into its uh, local uh, memory, it would use S3 as uh, to do that, right? So these way you can avoid these errors, okay? So um, just a couple of suggestions, as I said. Uh, and I think, uh, meanwhile, the job is running. I'll quickly also head over to my YouTube. And I have shared these uh, uh, in the community sections. If you see the post over here, just want to show you really really quick again this is the blog blog post introducing uh, the cloud shuffle storage plugin for apache spark so just to show you again not going too too much crazy so instead of the local disk it would now spill the data into s3 one important thing that you need to remember when this happens you need to set up a lifecycle policy on that bucket so that data is pruned on a regular basis okay so just an fii otherwise that bucket will grow right so my job is still running and this can take about a couple of minutes, I would say. Now, another thing is, again, if you don't want to process all the files that are there, you can also do batch processing, which means you can say uh, process X number of files or process X number of megabytes, and then you can run the job on a schedule basis. And the bookmark will make sure that you're only processing new incremental data. So coming back to my screen. And here you can see the job has been succeeded. It took about two minutes over here. And um, now what I can do is if I head over to my glue database, I see a hoodie DB and I would see a table called small files. And if I now basically head over to Athena, at this point I can go and run ad hoc queries on my data lake. So I can come here, click on preview table. And at this point I should be able to run uh, some basic ad hoc queries on my data lake. As you can see so far it works great, right? So what you have learned in this uh, demo is basically how to work with extremely small files, how to ingest them. And basically we also talked about auto scaling in this video, right? So set your workers to auto scale. And also uh, we want to leverage, uh, as, I, as I explained, right? Uh, cloud shuffle storage plugin for Apache Spark. So these are the stuff that we want to leverage. So I shall conclude my video over here and I hope you have enjoyed it. And in some upcoming videos, we are gonna talk more about if you have a lot of partitions, how can I query the data just for a particular partitions, right, in Glue. So I'll cover all those topics as well, but hopefully this video helps you. The entire code, so if you wanna try this lab out, the first is you need to populate your S3 with some fake data. Uh, I have the script there. So all you gotta do is plug in your access secret key, run the uh, script, it will populate the data. And then I have the glue job as well. So take the code, just replace the S3 bucket and run and see things in action. Thank you so much. And if you have question, you may comment on the video. If you have any other thing, please let me know. Until then, keep smiling, keep programming. See you guys in the next video.